How's everybody doing? This is Dave with Original Privateer. I got my daughter Lane Goodwin here, which is my my co-partner with Original Privateer. She actually designed the logo. I appreciate <laughs> it. And actually, you designed the uh, the Arrows logo. We mm -hmm. call Aim Forward. So I did. Um, so she's back from college and. Hey, I like that blog post you wrote on our blog. If you haven't Thank been you. to our website, yeah. make sure you go to blog posts go check it out. and check out our blog post. You know, we got a few people writing. We got uh, Spencer McGinnis. He uh, he actually lost his leg and has a prosthetic or pros or pros pros prosthetic prosthetic, yeah. and he's amazing. He's actually doing some motivational speaking, and this is a guy who lost his leg, and it didn't stop him from living. He's actually. Uh, rides motocross and actually he's getting into speed skating. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. That's so that, that's an inspiration. And we got uh, Stephanie Sutherland out in California. She's a motocross racer. She's talked about her life and how to overcome some of the challenges she has or had and how she's pushing through it. She's big into yoga and those different things. But but I got my daughter here, Lane Goodwin. <laughs> she goes to KU Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Oh yeah, Rock Chalk. <laughs> and um, Let's, uh, I'm going to let you talk. I do all the time. All the time. <laughs> well, I'm back, luckily, for Thanksgiving break. And with that, Lane, I want you to talk a little bit about that blog. You talked about going to college, mm -hmm. the new experiences in life, the new challenges in life, how you've had to come back to your foundational beliefs to, to keep you pushing forward while you were in an, while, while you're in this new experience that is uncomfortable, mm -hmm. is challenging, and you really have to rely on who you are, your confidence, and push through it. So I'm going to let you run with it and uh, enjoy. Yeah, well, I mean, if you get the chance, check out my blog. It's my first one I've ever done. It was definitely a vulnerable step for me because I've always loved writing, but I've never published anything like that. And so I kind of exposed myself to you guys, but my blog, it was just kind of a general idea of where I'm at in my life right now. I wanted it to be the beginning step for my other blogs so that you kind of had a platform of my perspective and my current adventure and so from there my my other blogs will kind of emphasize details of that adventure but yeah go check it out i'm, I'm just kind of talking about this uncomfortable but exciting situation i'm in right now i go to a college it's only five hours away i'm not across the country just across the state but i'm surrounded by entirely new people every day taking new classes in a new city it's a city to me but so yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting. Well, let me moment. ask you about that blog. You know, when I was when I was reading that blog, and some of you in the audience may have read her blog, there was a lot of vulnerability there. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of rawness. There was a lot of people to to challenge it and go, wow, well, that's kind of putting it out there a little mm -hmm. bit. W were you nervous about being vulnerable and, and being raw and actually speaking from the soul level, despite? Um, you know, anytime you put yourself out there, whether it be a blog, whether it be this video you're watching, mm -hmm. you're always opening yourself up um, for judgment, opinion, and, right, you are. Or, or those kind of things. Mm -hmm. did, did those kind of things go through your mind? Or did you take it as, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it and try to be as authentic as I can? Well, the immediate reaction was there was vulnerability there. Because when I write, I feel like I write with my soul. And so... I'm exposing a piece of myself, and I'm not one of those people, I'm very uh, internalized, I don't expose my feelings at a raw level, I mean granted I have feelings, but you don't see me crying to people very often, so exposing myself, yeah, you, it, was, it was a vulnerable feeling, but it was more exciting, because I'm at a point in my life where I feel like I have a lot of things to say, and things that could encourage someone else, or even they could entertain somebody. So I was more excited by that. And the other thing too is, is when you put yourself out there in any forum, you need to know that there will always be criticism. That's life. And some people get more upset by it than others. Sometimes I get upset by it too. I can be pretty sensitive sometimes, but whatever. I'm just kind of more on the, on the thrill of it right now. I could care less if someone wants to criticize me about what my feelings. So do you, how important do you think it is not to be worrying about what the opinions of others and how much of an effect do you think it has on a person if you're worried about all the opinions around you, judgments around you, um, as well as, um, um, what was I going to say here? Self-love maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so how do, how do you feel about, how do you think it affects you? when you're worried about the opinions of others and, and the judgments on you and, 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 
and comparing yourself it and those kind of things like that it all kind of ties into self-love and confidence mm -hmm. but how, how would you elaborate on that if there's somebody out there watching the audience maybe it's a girl or, or anybody um we're not experts right here we're just being raw right. i just sat you down and said let's talk yeah <laughs> but but what are your feelings from a woman's a young woman's perspective i'm a dude i'm gonna i'm gonna handle things differently we all handle things differently we all respond to our failures and our, <coughs> and our different events in life differently but how how would you articulate that well there's a fine line and there's such a balance and everybody is different and like they say too much of anything is always bad even if it's a good thing so there's a fine line you know opinions you can't totally disregard them because opinions can be useful in terms of self-evaluation granted you can't give them too much merit and you have to pick and choose whose opinions you value over others based off of how strong their code is about them but at the same time you cannot live your life being dictated by others opinions and when you do that is the easiest way to fall down the hole of self-esteem issues because people are always gonna have bad opinions honestly half the time those bad opinions aren't even real it's just they're they're fueled by jealousy and hate or personal problems that they can't overcome themselves so they just push it on someone else you can't you can't live like that you have just got to self-evaluate as you go and learn to act in a way that you love and that you're proud of and then everything will fall after that that follow after that <laughs> i think that's exactly where self-esteem issues come is comparing yourself and it's something that's so easy to do because like i said every day i encounter girls that are amazingly beautiful and I could easily compare myself you just have to get I, I don't exactly know how to tell you to not do that because everybody has a different way of approaching that that's something you have to figure out for yourself but the minute you compare yourself to others is the minute you're gonna have self-esteem issues because you're gonna go out and you're constantly fidgeting because you don't think that your clothes look as good as the next girls or and it, it puts your day at a really bad level and the other thing too is not just comparing yourself but anytime that you get somebody else's opinion whether it be directly and it be negative or whether a guy doesn't like you like you expect it to sometimes that can ding your confidence because you're like why would why was their opinion of me not enough why was i not enough but at the end of the day you can't ask why you were not enough because they weren't enough for you if if they didn't choose you or they weren't enough for you if their opinion wasn't as high as it should have been as long as you were behaving correctly of course I mean granted you have to own up for your own actions and if you were being a little biatch and they called you one then maybe that was your own doing but you know I mean there's a balance to it you can't necessarily disregard others opinions because sometimes others opinions help with self-awareness but at the same time you can't live off of what everybody else thinks of you so you just got to find the happy medium in your life where you still have that confidence inside and knowing who, knowing you're enough yeah and knowing you're enough is the main thing you've got to know you're enough you cannot question that so it really comes back to knowing who you are mm -hmm. and having a code and having a code yeah and when we talk about co code we, we talk about having a belief system in mm -hmm. you and having thoughts that support that belief system right uh, of knowing who you are if you mm -hmm. know who you are you're going to have a belief system that supports that and with that so you step out of your comfort zone you step out of where where you have a friend pool you know everybody everybody knows you you step into this new place you're you're at a school that has 24 to 30,000 students you're surrounded by uh, beautiful girls every day and, and girls tend to compare themselves mm -hmm. and, and and look at those things it's just I don't know is that a, is that what girls do well I can't stereotype all girls and from what I've been told guys have their own ways of doing yeah. things too we can't but, leave the dudes out but so. as women as young women we have so many standards of beauty which most of them are wrong because everybody's beautiful in their own way but we have so many standards of beauty and therefore we compare each other and ourselves because there are so many different things to compare about i mean heck you could compare yourself based off of eyebrows or i mean or anything and so it's easy to do that i'm surrounded by beautiful girls every day from all different ethnicities they're gorgeous great style and i've just 
gotten in a habit of rather than comparing, I just admire them. Never in my mind That's does awesome. it enter, the, I wish I looked like them. It's just a matter of thinking, wow, they're beautiful. Or if they have cool clothes, dang, there's some style and spell for the day. You can take that home and pick out an outfit based off of it, you know? I mean, you just gotta get in the habit of it though. And luckily I've been doing it for long enough that it, it is pretty easy. Now when it gets hard is when there's boys involved. It's always hard not to compare yourself when there's boys involved. Maybe that's not everyone's issue, but I mean, it's a, it's an issue for me because when boys are involved, we value their opinions sometimes. Some of you guys out there do not think that I give a crap what you think about me, <laughs> but there are some of you out there. You're kind of cute. I may, I may think a little bit about what you think that's about me. That's vulnerable right but, there. That's raw. <laughs> but anyways, and so that can be hard, but at the end of the day, you have to have self-love, which is something that's hard. And you have to know that you're enough. And if you know you're enough, then anybody that doesn't think you're enough, you know isn't enough for you. It's not that you're not enough for them. They just can't handle you. So that's kind of a fine line right there. But that's just my perspective on it. I know everybody's is different. No, and you know, and I'm just hitting you with some raw stuff here. Mm -hmm. You know, these videos, all the videos I do are about becoming a better version of ourselves every day and about having self-awareness. And if, if we don't have, um, if we don't understand something or we're ignorant about something, the opposite of that is uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. And knowledge creates understanding. And with that understanding, mm -hmm. that's where we can develop self-esteem, self-love, develop courage, mm -hmm. and those kind of things that push us through these different things. And right. those are the things I've always tried to instill in you since you were little. But, but nevertheless, you're going to have your own challenges, mm -hmm. stepping away from mom and dad, going into the world. And, and having things in your face mm -hmm. that are going to challenge those things. And, and like he says, confidence, you're not born with it. You work for it every day. And I compare it to being fit, for example. Nobody is born fit. Granted, your parents could have given you some good calves, which is the equivalent of your parents teaching you from the beginning to be confident. But that confidence is built by you. And just like being fit, you have to get the motivation to go to the gym and it's hard and there are days where you don't want to do it. So you start going to the gym and you get in this habit, just like you start getting in the habit of self-affirmation and not comparing yourself. And finally, once you get into this habit, finally you can see the difference, whether you see the difference in your fitness or you see the difference in your mind. You don't have to work as hard to be positive. And then from there, it's not permanent. You still every day got to keep working for that confidence. Maintaining it. Maintaining it. It's all about maintaining it. And maintaining it can sometimes be the hardest part because just like being fit, everybody's motivated for that moment that you notice the difference. The moment that you notice the difference is the biggest reward because you're like, wow, my work paid off. But from there, the glamour of it disappears and you just have to keep doing it for yourself. Because nothing else is going to motivate you to keep doing that. And <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> uh, don't you think? And don't you think that confidence is so key, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. no matter whether it's getting over trials and tribulations, or maintaining your belief system, mm -hmm. or you know remembering who you are and what you're about. Because you know, as I always said. The thinking that got you in trouble mm -hmm. isn't going to be the thinking that, mm, that gets you out of that it. That gets you out of it. <laughs> yeah. So you know, the the where you're at, um, it, it is based upon how you're responding. Mm -hmm. That that that's what it's about choices. Where, where you're at is because of choices. It's because of decisions. And we have a choice. We have a choice. And that choice is take this path or this path. And really, don't you feel like it comes down to you? Mm -hmm. Nobody else can do it for you. It really does. And I speak from my own perspective. I know it gets really itty gritty when you get on the topic of being dealt bad hands because I'm a fortunate person compared to some people in the world. I've grown up in a fortunate environment. I haven't, I've, I've had to work for things, but they've never been so far out of reach that they seem out of my, you know, they, they don't impossible. seem like they're impossible to me. And I know that there are people that come from the opposite. And it's harder to tell those people that you are where you are because of choice. Right. That's. But choices will always be present. And even if it's hard to come face to face with the fact that you're in control, you are. And, and you need to own up that. Once you own the fact that you're in control and you start making those choices, I can't say it's going to immediately get better, but it may get a little easier. 
It starts with the decision, though. Mm -hmm. It starts with the decision, and it start and it continues with the maintenance of that decision. It doesn't just go from there. You've really got to work. And I'm fortunate that I've been working on this from a very young age. So yeah, I've been it, kind of hard on you with that. <laughs> my parents have worked on my mind very hard from a young age, but I'm very, very thankful for that. Well, I think it really comes down to the mind, you know. I think it comes down to the quality of your life mm -hmm. comes down to the quality of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Your thought life, your thoughts are so freaking powerful. Oh, I don't know are. about you, but do you find yourself driving down the road, road thinking about this crazy ass bullshit oh, yeah. that we can imagine and create? And, and then you pair that with like sad music and oh boy, it just it's just like a scene from a movie. <laughs> it just manifests into a real shit show. Yeah. So, you know, with you, you know, working with you, if you don't, understand the tools to have to overcome that and mm -hmm. that you do have the power and the ability to overcome that it doesn't take long before you're in the shit <laughs> yeah you're pretty deep it's hard to get out of that too and that's why too you just need to take time to self-reflect because i know thank goodness this break came when it did college is such a busy place that sometimes i'm going and i'm going and i'm living so fast that i don't have time to slow down and be by myself and address my emotions as hard as some of them are to address. But you really need to do that because if you don't address your emotions and you just keep letting them fly around, you're never gonna get a handle on them. And if you don't have a handle on them, then I'm sure you're gonna feel a little crazy sometimes. I mean, we all feel a little crazy sometimes though, but. You know, and we can't, don't you believe that we can't dismiss our emotions and our feelings because they're like a warning system for us. Mm -hmm. No, I, I really think so too. I and even even the emotions that someone would consider bad, like anger and sadness and fear, those can be bad if they're not smushed. But you can kind of see them and identify them and identify where they're coming from and address them and then you gotta get rid of them. You can't let them stay there and grow. But you do need to address them and embrace them because there are they are part of your life and your emotions and how your adventure is going and I don't know. It's, kind of a, a it's an endless system. cycle. It is. And it's it really a challenge. Is. Yeah. I mean. Everything feeds into everything. It's all about choices and decisions and feelings and instincts. And it's just all and plays you know, into each other. And none of this shit's easy. No, none, none of, of this easy. shit's easy. And it's easy to overcomplicate it too. I mean, even talking about it, we're overcomplicating it. Yeah. And it really, we got to fall back to simplicity. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this, none of this is about perfection. There, no. There's none of us that are going to be perfect. Mm -mm. There's none of us that aren't going to make mistakes. But we also can't be afraid to fail. Right. And, and you also need to embrace that everybody's standards are different. And once you embrace that, then others' opinions are easier to take, too. Different perceptions. Mm -hmm. Different perspectives. Yeah. But I really believe, though, that our choices, what's going on in our inner world, actually dictates our outer world. Mm -hmm. What's going on in our inner world will create our external reality mm -hmm. in life. I agree with that. But so Lane, so what do you, I called you in, I said, Hey, let's sit down and do a video. And you're kind of like, Oh man, dad, I want to sit and watch a good movie under a blanket. Well, we're watching the matrix after this. Yeah. But what do you hope these videos, our audience out there, it's all different age groups, you know, but you're a young girl, you haven't been through, you haven't been married, you haven't had those challenges, mm -mm. you haven't had these different challenges. So you're speaking from your perspective mm -hmm. on where you're at in life. Right. But what do you hope? that these videos um, do to somebody? You know, at the end of the day, I just want these videos to encourage somebody, however it may encourage you, whether it encourages you to make the final jump and step outside of your comfort zone and pursue something that you've been wanting to pursue for a long time, or whether it gives you the final jump to make that last decision that leads you to a more positive lifestyle. I mean, <laughs> I just want to encourage people. I miss my daughter. <laughs> I miss him too. <laughs> so yeah, take this as encouragement. It's definitely not Get out of your else. comfort zone. But get out of your comfort take zone. Take some yeah. risks. And have some fun with it. It's all about fun too. If you're not enjoying life, then you need to change something. Because life can be really enjoyable if you give it a chance. I mean, could you imagine not being afraid to take a risk? I mean, I'm not talking foolish. I don't want yeah. you to do some oh, dumb no. shit. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want you to go out there and have your head up your ass and not realize that is dumb. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I'm, not, ta I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, and you're going to hear from dad if you pull that shit. <laughs>
but but I'm talking oh, about know. I'm talking about taking some risk and getting out of your comfort zone and challenging yourself to be the best version you can be. Mm-hmm. Don't limit yourself by your belief system. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how you were raised, how you grew up, where you come from. Take a stand on your life now and who is it that you want to be? And then ask yourself if 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 you want to be this person or that person or do this, what do those people do? And what does you know, it take to get there? What and does then it take you gotta to get buckle there? down because none of this is easy. And it's not about and, comparing yourself. Mm-mm. It's more about comparing yourself to the foundational fabric that creates that that person you want to be. Right. Or right. You know, a better way of saying that. No, I think you put it well. I like that foundational fabric. Yeah, I just kind of pulled that out. That <laughs> sounds cool though. I like it. I think we should yeah. stick with it. So Lane, I'm gonna throw some stuff at you here. Are you a Ford or a Chevy girl? I'm a Chevy girl, but I prefer foreign cars. I'm sorry. I would, I miss my Toyota. I'm currently driving a Chevy Silverado at college. That is a challenge in itself, <laughs> but it's pretty badass if I say so myself. I've got a really cool heart sticker on the back with a few words that remind everybody passing me that I'm a girl. <laughs> oh, girl power. Yeah. We'll say girl power. It's a little less inappropriate than that, but... <laughs> Four-stroke or two-stroker? I'm a two-stroker. Why do you like two-strokes? Dad told me that two-strokes create better riders. From the beginning. From the beginning. <laughs> From the beginning. From the beginning. Don't take offense <laughs> if any of you ride four-strokes, but Dad, Dad told me that they teach me a lot about shifting and keeping it in the pipe and all that, and they're cheaper to maintain. <laughs> well said, girl. Um, what kind of music do you like these days? Yeah, what kind of music do you listen to? I'm a rap girl. I like hip hop, rap, all of that. I actually just got done going to a Young Pinch concert. Check out Young Pinch. Most people don't that? know who he is. He's cool. He's got this long wave of curly hair. He's a cool dude. He put on a really good show, so check him out. But I'm a rap girl. <laughs> no country music. I was born and raised on country music, and so that's the first genre that I cut out of my life when I move. <laughs> Sorry. What about rock like your dad? Mm, in a certain environment. I can't just get down to rock music though. I'd rather bump Bust out to a good bass. <laughs> five Finger Death Punch? Yeah, on the occasion I do get down to Five Finger Death Punch. Not that terrible. A little disturbed? Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could get down to that. If we're talking classics too, I'm a big ACDC girl. Right on. So, Supercross or motocross? Supercross, because the last motocross race I went to, I sweat through all my clothes, I was covered in two inches of dust, and I had to walk a long ways just to see the riders. So I'd rather sit in the stands, <laughs> if we're being honest. <laughs> snowboard or ski? I s- snowboard, I've only been once, but I fell in love with it pretty cool awesome awesome yeah anything else you want to say Lane before we cut this short and you can get in your comfy clothes remember to slow down and enjoy life because we are in a great place right now there's endless possibilities how could you not be happy you know I mean go big smell the roses go big or take it safe go big go big or go home (laughs) <laughs> All right. Well, you heard it. Well, I want to give a shout out. I'm wearing uh, my buddies in Miami, Danger Flow. If you haven't checked out Danger Flow, uh, they have some great music. Mm-hmm. They're a Miami-based band. I think they're touring overseas right now. Uh, they got a positive vibe. My good friend Angel Ocean out there. I hope you're watching this. Thanks for the t-shirt, dude. Thanks for walk- rocking the original Privateer on the stage. I love you. I love all you guys with Danger Flow. Check them out on Instagram, Facebook. Um, Don't forget to check me out on Instagram, Snapchat, and read my blog. <laughs> wow, check that out. She cut me off with her stuff. <laughs> my Snapchat's lane.jim. My Instagram is lane underscore 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 Goodwin. That's a lot of underscores. Yeah, I really wanted to keep the lane good when I wasn't willing to add any numbers to it. <laughs> and please read my blog if, if you get the time. You know, yeah, I'm cool. Time on to it. Do it. But you know, there's a comment section at the bottom. Check it out. Uh, if they're mean, hey, don't be an asshole. <laughs> yeah, true. My dad will pummel your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you guys. This is Dave with Original Privateer. Lane Goodwin, my daughter with Original Privateer. Angel Ocean, Danger Flow. All you photographers out there, you guys kick ass. If you see one, tell them thank you. They work their butts off. Offer them a beer. Take them out for a steak dinner. <laughs> or give them a bottle of water. 
And all you soldiers <laughs> out there, all you military people, mm -hmm. we thank you that are overseas right now. You, you uh, soldiers in state, in the states, we mm -hmm. thank you as well. And, and shout out to the firefighters right now. Uh, the firefighters. The firefighters, man. firefighters thank need you, a Lane. big thank you right now. Thank you, Lane. Yeah. I mean, they got their hands full all over that yeah. stuff going on in California and in different places. You, you firefighters and quick responders. Yeah, you guys. Can't, are you guys right are badass. Yeah. You guys, you guys are the true heroes. So. Mm -hmm. Again, these videos are just made to encourage and inspire you, but by no means are we experts, and by no means will Lane and I get off this video and start arguing about something oh, yeah. that is dumb. Probably. Okay? Because she may kick a cop an attitude with me, and Dad don't dig that. No, Dad doesn't dig attitudes. So, be cool for the rest of the day, will you? Yeah, you try to. I don't, I don't want to put up with your shit before you have to go back to college. Don't, don't get on me too hard today. We love you guys. Have a good day. Thank you.